Lucas and Alara lay helpless on the cold stone floor of the crumbling church, their bodies drained of energy, unable to transform or fight back. The ancient walls echoed with the quiet sound of their ragged breaths, and the overwhelming presence of dark magic pressed down on them like a weight they couldn't lift. I feel so weak, Lucas groaned, barely able to lift his head. His muscles felt like they had been drained of all their strength, his once powerful body now fragile and useless. Elara, my energy, it's gone. Elara, equally immobile, shifted slightly beside him, her face pale. How can he be here? She whispered, her voice filled with disbelief. You finished him off with Vorath, I saw it. Lucas's mind spun with memories of that brutal battle. I took him out, he muttered, while Eldritch took down Vorath. It should have been the end. From the dark corners of the church, a deep, sinister voice echoed, sending a chill down their spines. Your blood-sucking friend may have slain Vorath, the voice hissed. But you, Lucas, you underestimated my ability to heal. For years, I've been waiting, plotting, while I recuperated from the damage your claws inflicted on me. A figure stepped out of the darkness, a tall, imposing man cloaked in shadow. His face was marked by a deep scar, a brutal reminder of his last encounter with Lucas. His eyes glinted with malice, and his hands crackled with dark magic, swirling like living shadows around his fingers. Malachi, Lucas growled, his voice filled with both anger and fear. The evil shadow sorcerer, who they thought had been slain, now stood before them, very much alive and ready for vengeance. Malachi's lips twisted into a wicked smile. Oh, how I will make you pay for what you did, he sneered, his voice dripping with venom. You thought you had defeated me, but you didn't account for my magic, did you? While you've spent the last few years enjoying your victories, I've been waiting for this moment. My revenge will be so satisfying. Elara tried to move, but the oppressive weight of Malachi's dark magic kept her pinned to the floor. You're a coward, she spat, her voice barely above a whisper, hiding in the shadows, waiting for us to be weakened. Malachi stepped closer, his scarred face illuminated by a faint, eerie glow of his magic. Coward? No, I simply planned ahead. I knew you two would come when a supernatural disturbance was detected in the area. After all, you're winter's closest enforcers, and I chose this location specifically because I knew it would draw you here. Lucas clenched his jaw, rage bubbling up inside him but his body wouldn't respond. You manipulated everything. Indeed, Malachi said, his smile widening. I took control of the dryad spirit that once protected these woods. She was strong, yes, but no match for my shadow magic. It took time, but eventually I corrupted her essence, twisted her into the weapon. And those creatures you are you've been fighting, they're nothing more than puppets born from the dryad's corrupted energy. Elara's eyes widened as the realisation hit her. You... you used her to create those things? Of course, Malachi said with a chuckle. It was a brilliant plan, wasn't it? The Dryad's power is formidable, but when bent to my will, it becomes a tool of destruction. And now, with my magic feeding off this land, there's nothing left to stop me. No vampires no elementals, and certainly no werewolves. He looked down at them, his smile fading as his eyes darkened with malice. I've waited so long for this day, the day I finally destroy the two of you and make you pay for the scars you left on my body. Lucas growled, 
his eyes burning with anger, but there was nothing he could do. His body refused to move, the weight of Malachi's magic holding him down like chains. Elara, too, was powerless, her body pinned by the same force. No vampires or elementals to save you now, Malachi whispered, his voice like a cold wind. It's just you and me, and the end of your pathetic lives. Malachi stood over Lucas and Ilara, a dark grin curling his scarred lips. His hand reached to his belt, pulling out a jagged, ancient-looking dagger. The blade shimmered with an unnatural energy, radiating malice. Its surface was engraved with strange runes that glowed faintly in the dim light of the church. This, Malachi began, holding the blade up so Lucas and Ilara could see, is no ordinary dagger. This is a cursed blade, known as the Werewolf Slayer. It has been imbued with ancient magic, designed to cause indescribable pain and suffering to lichens before finally ending their miserable lives. Alara looked up at him, her face twisted in disgust despite the weakness in her body. I'll give you an idea where you can put it, she muttered, her eyes filled with defiance. Malachi's smile faltered, replaced by a snarl. Who shall be first? He mused, looking between the two of them. There is no cure for the cursed wound it will leave, and once it pierces your flesh, the other will have no choice but to watch as their beloved dies a slow, agonising death. The pain will be exquisite, and I will enjoy every moment of it. Lucas even in his weakened state, couldn't resist a smirk. Ah, uh, could you do me first? I can't stand your breath. Seriously, when was the last time you flossed? I think I might have a tic-tac in my bag somewhere. Malachi's eyes blazed with fury, his snarl deepening. Always the joker, aren't you, Lucas? But jokes won't save you now. He raised the cursed dagger, ready to plunge it into Lucas's chest. But just as the blade was about to strike, a gunshot echoed through the church. The sound of the shot reverberated off the stone walls, and in the blink of an eye, the cursed dagger was knocked from Malachi's hand. It spun through the air, clattering to the ground several feet away. Malachi froze, his eyes wide in shock, as he processed what had just happened. An impossible shot had hit the blade with perfect precision, saving Lucas in the nick of time. From the distance, hidden in the shadows of the trees outside the church, Elena smiled through her sniper scope. Too easy, she whispered, her voice filled with confidence. She lowered the rifle slightly, glancing over at Captain Knox, who stood beside her. Give me a harder target next time. Captain Knox smirked, keeping her eyes on the church, Impressive, as always, Commander. Malachi's snarl returned, deeper and more furious than before. Friends of yours, he spat, his eyes narrowing dangerously. His entire body shimmered, turning into shadow as his form shifted into a dark, swirling mist. I'll deal with them first, he hissed, his voice low and menacing. With a flicker, he vanished into the darkness leaving Lucas and Alara lying on the cold stone floor, still weak and immobile. The church was once again filled with an oppressive silence, but the three soldiers knew what was coming next. Outside the church, Elena scanned the area through her scope, her senses sharp. He's coming, she said, her voice steady but tense. Captain Harris, standing a few feet away, tightened his grip on his rifle. I can feel it. Stay sharp. We don't know what he'll try next. Sonia's eyes flicked to the tree line, her hand on her pistol. We've got the advantage of distance. We just need to hold him off long enough for Lucas and Alara to recover. A cold wind swept through the trees, rustling the leaves. Shadows seemed to lengthen and shift unnaturally, and the three soldiers felt the weight of Malachi's presence closing in. He's hunting us now, Elena said, her voice low. Let's make sure he regrets it. 
The forest was still. The three soldiers standing ready, their weapons at the ready, eyes scanning the darkness for any sign of movement. But in an instant, Malachi appeared before them, emerging from a swirling shadow with a malevolent grin stretched across his scarred face. Pathetic, Malachi sneered, his voice cold and dripping with disdain. Three mortals, armed with nothing more than toys. Before they could react, Elena, Captain Knox and Captain Harris opened fire, their bullets ripping through the air with precision, but the rounds never found their mark. Instead, they hit what seemed to be an invisible wall of shadow, passing through Malachi's form as though he were made of smoke. Malachi laughed, the sound sending a chill through the air. With a lazy wave of his hand, a burst of dark energy exploded from him, and the three soldiers were hurled backward. They hit the ground hard, their bodies crashing into the dirt, unconscious, before they even had time to register the attack. Malachi stepped forward, his twisted grin widening as he looked down at the fallen soldiers. You sent the wrong team, Winter, he muttered to himself, his eyes glowing with dark magic. Maybe you're not as perfect as they say, inside the church. Meanwhile, Lucas and Alara struggled against the immense power holding them down. Their bodies ached, their muscles trembling as they tried to move, but the weight of Malachi's dark magic pinned them to the cold stone floor like anchors. We can't move, Alara groaned, her voice filled with frustration and pain. There must be a way, Lucas grunted, his body straining against the invisible force. We have to get out. Malachi will make short work of them. They won't stand a chance. But even as they fought, the power that bound them refused to yield. Elena's vision. As the battle continued, Elena, still unconscious from Malachi's attack, found herself once again in the presence of winter. It wasn't like the dreams she had before. This time, it felt more vivid, more real. The figure of winter appeared before her, his presence overwhelming. His face remained obscured, but his aura was undeniable. The air around her buzzed with knowledge, as if entire tomes of wisdom were being poured into her mind in an instant. And then she knew. Elena's eyes snapped open, and the world came back into focus. She found herself lying on the ground, Malachi standing over her fallen friends, his back turned to her. Without a second thought, she grabbed her sniper rifle, her mind racing with the information she had been given. Without looking back, Elena took off running into the forest, leaving her friends behind. Malachi heard her footsteps retreating and let out a cruel laugh. There's always one coward among them, he called after her, his voice echoing through the trees. Run, little one. Ah, I will catch up with you soon enough, after I've finished with your friends. With a wave of his hand, Malachi conjured a swirling dark portal that opened in front of Captain Knox and Captain Harris. Their unconscious bodies were lifted from the ground as though they were mere puppets, and without hesitation, Malachi flung them into the portal inside the church. Lucas and Elara were still bound by the dark magic when Captain Knox and Captain Harris suddenly materialised in the church, their unconscious forms collapsing onto the cold floor next to them. Knox! Harris! Lucas shouted, his eyes widening in horror as he saw his friend's lifeless bodies. Elara's eyes filled with rage, but her body remained pinned by the invisible force. We have to stop him, she growled, her voice filled with desperation. Malachi reappeared in the church, his form flickering in and out of the shadows like a ghost. His sinister grin returned as he slowly approached them. Now, he said with a mocking tone, where were we? The air in the church grew colder, darker, as Malachi stood over Lucas and Alara, his twisted grin casting a shadow over them. His hands glowed with the energy of his dark magic, and the weight of the power he wielded was suffocating. 
Lucas and Alara lay immobilized, unable to summon the strength to move, let alone fight back. Malachi's cruel smile widened as he began to speak, his voice filled with sinister glee. You never understood the extent of my power. Did you, he said, his voice low and menacing. You thought that by scarring me, by defeating Vorath, you could end my reign, but you underestimated me. I've been planning this moment for years. Malachi raised his hand, and with a sharp gesture, the shadows in the church swirled and twisted. The oppressive darkness seemed to thicken as a vision began to form before Lucas and Alara, a window into the true source of Malachi's power, the Dryad's prison. Far from the church, deep within the forest, there lay a secret cove, ancient and hidden from the world. Inside the dryad spirit, once the guardian of the forest, was trapped, her ethereal body bound by thick, writhing vines. The once vibrant energy that flowed through her had been corrupted by Malachi's dark magic, and the vines that encased her pulsed with shadow, impenetrable to any force, no matter how powerful. The cove itself was a haunting sight. The natural beauty of the forest had been twisted into something dark and malevolent. The trees surrounding the cove were gnarled and withered, their branches clawing at the sky as if in agony. The ground was slick with decay, the life of the forest being drained into the dryad's prison, feeding Malachi's endless thirst for power. The dryad, a once beautiful and radiant being, made of living vines and bark, now lay trapped within the cove, her form withered and weakened. The dark vines that held her glowed faintly, their energy pulsating as they drained her essence. Her eyes, once luminous with the life of the forest, were now dim, her strength fading with every moment. Malachi's Dark Power In the church... Malachi continued, his voice echoing with the weight of his dark magic. You see, I knew you and Alara would come when a supernatural disturbance was detected. I lured you here, knowing Winter would send his most trusted enforcers. And now, you've fallen right into my trap. He gestured toward the vision of the cove. That is where my true power comes from. The Dryad Spirit. She was once the guardian of these woods. But with my magic, I twisted her power into something far more useful. She fuels me now, her essence feeding my dark magic. Those creatures you fought, they were born from her essence, corrupted and bent to my will. Elara's eyes filled with rage as she saw the Dryad's torment, the way her ancient, sacred power had been perverted into a tool of destruction. You monster, she growled, her voice barely above a whisper as the weight of Malachi's magic kept her pinned. Malachi knelt beside her, his voice dropping to a cruel whisper. Monster, no, Ilara. I am a master of shadows, of power beyond your comprehension. I used the Dryad's connection to the forest, manipulated her very essence to create the creatures that have brought you and your friends to your knees. Lucas, struggling to move even an inch, spat out through gritted teeth. You think this will end with us? Winter will come. He'll end you. Malachi stood, his laugh cold and bitter. Winter. He's too busy with his own battles. By the time he realises what has happened here, it will be too late for all of you. He turned his gaze toward the vision of the cove, his eyes glinting with dark satisfaction. I bound the Dryad's power in that impenetrable prison. Not even the most powerful vampire or elemental could penetrate the dark magic that holds her. Malachi's hand crackled with dark energy, his power radiating through the church. And now her strength is mine. The vines that hold her feed my magic. And as long as I have her, no one can challenge me, not even you. Elara's heart raced as she watched the dryad suffering, 
the vines wrapped so tightly around her body, draining her life force to fuel Malachi's sorcery. The power that held the dryad was a ancient, unbreakable, and it was clear that Malachi had planned this trap meticulously. There's nothing you can do to stop this, Malachi sneered, stepping back toward Lucas and Elara. No one can break the spell that holds the dryad. You will die here, and with your deaths, my vengeance will finally be complete. Lucas, breathing heavily, locked eyes with Malachi. This isn't just revenge. This is about power, isn't it? You were always obsessed with it. Malachi's smile faltered, his scarred face twisting in rage. Of course, it's about power, he spat. You and your friends humiliated me, left me for dead, but I survived, and now I will use that power to destroy you, just as I've always planned. He raised his hands, and the shadows around him thickened, pulsating with dark magic. The church seemed to groan under the weight of his power, the walls trembling as Malachi prepared to strike the final blow. You see now, Malachi said, his voice dripping with satisfaction. There is no escape. You will die here, and no one can stop me. The scene in the church was dire. Lucas and Elara, weakened and trapped, could do nothing but watch as Malachi prepared to finish them off. And in the distant cove, the dryad spirit, bound by the unbreakable vines of dark magic, lay trapped, her power drained to fuel the very magic that would destroy them all. Elena raced through the forest, her mind focused, her heart pounding. The location implanted in her mind was clear, a destination given to her by the mysterious vision of winter. As she approached, the air grew thick with dark magic, the trees twisted and corrupted, the ground slick with decay. Ahead, a dense thicket of dark vines and shadows shielded the dryad spirit, trapped in an unnatural prison. Elena crept closer, positioning herself behind a large, gnarled tree. She raised her sniper rifle, peering through the scope. The scene before her was daunting. Dark vines coiled around the dryad spirit like snakes, shifting and pulsing with shadowy energy. Above the dryad, barely visible through the swirling mass of vines and shadows, was a small trinket. It flickered in and out of view as the vines moved, but Elena knew immediately that this was the key. The trinket was what fueled the prison, keeping the dryad trapped and Malachi's magic intact. All right, Elena, she whispered to herself, adjusting her grip on the rifle. You wanted a challenge shot. You got one. No, the shot was nearly impossible. The distance, the thick fog rolling through the forest, the wind, and the unpredictable movement of the vines and shadows. All of it made for a nightmare shot. But Elena's confidence never wavered. She took a steady in breath, her mind clear. I may be terrible in relationships, and I'm probably not the best friend, but one thing I'm good at is killing. She smirked, locking her target. And it's because I can fire this weapon and not miss. She adjusted her scope, calculating the trajectory, accounting for the wind, the movement of the vines, and the brief moments when the trinket would be exposed. She lowered herself to the ground, steadying the rifle on a rock to eliminate any shake. Her finger hovered over the trigger. For a moment, time seemed to stop. Elena's breathing slowed, and the world faded into silence. All that existed was her, the rifle, and the target. She pulled the trigger. The bullet hummed through the air, cutting through the fog and trees with deadly precision. It sliced between the shifting vines, through the smallest of openings, its path calculated to perfection, and in an instant, the bullet struck the trinket dead centre, shattering it into a thousand pieces. The effect was immediate. The prison around the dryad collapsed, the vines shriveling and disintegrating. The shadows that once protected the prison melted away, leaving the dryad spirit free for the first time since Malachi had ensnared her in the church. Back in the church, 
Malachi stood over Lucas and Alara, ready to strike with the cursed blade. His face twisted into a sadistic grin as he raised the dagger, preparing for the fatal blow. But just as the blade was about to plunge into Lucas, Malachi froze, his eyes widening in horror. No! He screamed, his voice filled with rage. The moment the trinket shattered, Malachi's connection to the Dryad's power was severed. The dark magic that had bound Lucas, Elara, and the others began to dissipate. Lucas, sensing the shift, leaped to his feet, transforming into his werewolf form in a single fluid motion. Elara followed suit, her snarl reverberating through the church as she joined Lucas. The two lichens now ready for battle. Captain Knox and Captain Harris also stood up, ready to fight. Malachi, realising the tables had turned, began to pulse with dark magic, his eyes burning with hatred. The cursed blade in his hand still radiated its malevolent energy, but even with his immense power, he knew the situation had changed. Elara growled, the message clear, even though she couldn't speak in wolf form. Retreat. Malachi was still too powerful with his magic and the cursed blade. They couldn't take him head on, not yet. Run! Malachi roared, his voice filled with fury. Run, and I will hunt you down, each of you. I am not done with... His words were cut short as vines began to grow from within the church. They snaked along the walls, creeping across the floor, wrapping around the pillars and beams. Malachi's eyes widened in shock as he turned to see the vines multiplying, growing at an impossible speed. No, Malachi whispered, his voice filled with disbelief. This cannot be. Outside the church, the ground trembled as the dryad spirit, now free from Malachi's control, asserted her power over the forest once again. The creatures Malachi had once controlled rose from the ground, but they were no longer under his command. Instead, they were now bound to the will of the Dryad, and their eyes turned towards the church. The creatures, once monstrous and grotesque, now stood silently, awaiting the Dryad's command. Though the Dryad had once been a peaceful guardian of the forest, Malachi had tested her wrath, and now her anger was palpable. Malachi's expression twisted into one of panic as the vines within the church grew thicker, stronger, wrapping around him, pulling him towards the centre of the room. No! he screamed, his voice echoing off the stone walls. I will not be defeated. The vines continued to grow, covering every inch of the church, sealing the exits, blocking all light. Malachi was trapped his dark magic pulsing wildly as he tried to fight back. But the more he struggled, the tighter the vines constricted, their strength fueled by the Dryad's fury. Outside, the creatures stood ready, surrounding the church, prepared to attack should Malachi manage to escape. But there would be no escape. The vines began to compress, the walls of the church groaning under the pressure. Malachi's screams filled the air, his once unstoppable power now reduced to desperation as the very forces he had sought to control turned against him. Elena watched from a distance, her rifle still in hand. She could hear Malachi's screams, but she knew that it was over. The Dryad had taken back her power and Malachi's reign of terror was about to come to a crushing end. The sound of crumbling stone and snapping wood echoed through the forest as the entire church collapsed in on itself. The vines, now fully grown and thick with the Dryad's power, had crushed every last bit of the structure. Dust and debris filled the air, and when it finally cleared, nothing remained of Malachi's dark sanctuary. The ground where the church once stood was a mass of twisted vines and broken stone, silent and still. Lucas, Elara, Captain Knox and Captain Harris stood just outside the ruins, their bodies still tense from the fight, their eyes scanning the wreckage. Lucas and Elara, both now in human form, 
shared a glance, knowing that Malachi had been a formidable foe, but also one not easily defeated. Think that's the end of him? Alara asked, brushing a strand of hair from her face, her voice weary but cautious. Lucas shook his head, his eyes still locked on the ruins. No, he's a sneaky one. We've thought he was gone before. Before they could dwell on it further, footsteps approached, and Elena emerged from the tree line, her sniper rifle slung over her shoulder. The three soldiers and the two lichens gathered, the tension finally easing. Sonia wasted no time, wrapping Elena in a tight hug. You saved us, Sonia whispered, her voice filled with gratitude. Captain Harris gave Elena a firm pat on the back, his gruff voice breaking the silence. Good job, Commander. Alara stepped forward, her brow furrowed with curiosity. What happened, Elena? How did you free the Dryad spirit? We were pinned down by Malachi's magic. It was impossible for us to move. Elena, still catching her breath, grinned, a proud twinkle in her eye. I had a vision of winter, she explained. It wasn't like before. It felt more real this time. He showed me exactly what to do. I knew there was something keeping the Dryad imprisoned, and when I saw the trinket above her, well, let's just say it was a shot no one else could have pulled off. Alara smiled and placed a hand on Elena's shoulder. We owe you our lives. Thank you. Before anyone could respond, the ground rumbled beneath their feet. Lucas and Alara tensed, ready for another battle. But it wasn't a threat that emerged from the earth. Instead, it was the Dryad spirit herself. She rose from the ground in her true form, a towering figure made of vines, bark, and the pure energy of the forest. Her presence was overwhelming, yet peaceful. She did not speak, but the air around them filled with an unspoken gratitude, a sense of calm washing over the group. Elena smiled, feeling the spirit's thanks. You're welcome, she whispered, though she knew the dryad could hear her. A moment later, the spirit vanished, disappearing back into the forest she had once protected. As the spirit faded, the creatures that had once terrorized the group began to crumble. The dark magic that had animated them was gone, and the logs, branches, and trees that made up their bodies returned to the earth, lifeless and still. Captain Harris watched in disbelief as the last of the creatures dissolved into the forest. So who the hell is this Malachi guy? he asked, turning to Lucas with a raised eyebrow. Lucas sighed, folding his arms. Malachi is a dark sorcerer. We battled some time ago. He's been obsessed with power for centuries. He tried to manipulate the supernatural forces of this world to conquer it, and he nearly succeeded. We managed to stop him before, with the help of another friend, just like today. Elena nodded, her gaze drifting back toward the ruins of the church. And you think he'll come back? Elara shrugged. He always finds a way, but after today, he won't be coming back any time soon. Sonia shook her head with a wry smile. Well, if he does, we'll be ready for him. Captain Harris smirked. Let's hope next time he doesn't bring a cursed blade and an army of walking logs. The group shared a quiet moment of relief, standing in the peaceful forest, now free from the dark magic that had threatened them. The night was calm, the air filled with the familiar sounds of rustling leaves and distant wildlife. For now, at least, the battle was over. Elena smiled to herself, feeling the weight of the fight lifting from her shoulders. Well, she said with a smirk, Who's up for a drink? Lucas laughed, his voice finally lightening. I think we've earned it. And with that, the group turned away from the ruins of the church, the twisted remains of Malachi's magic, now nothing more than a memory. But even as they walked, they knew that the darkness wasn't gone for good. Malachi had been stopped, but his evil would always linger, waiting for another chance to rise again.
From a distant vantage point, Winter and Eldritch sat side by side, unseen by the friends below as they walked off into the peaceful forest, their victory over Malachi fresh but not yet fully appreciated. You see, Eldritch, Winter said, his voice calm and steady. Your old friends could do it without you. Eldritch, the ancient vampire, with decaying flesh and sunken eyes, leaned back, observing the group in silence for a moment. His withered lips curled into a smile. Yes, he said, his voice rasping. And they didn't need an omnipotent man in a mask to stop a shadow sorcerer, did they? Winter chuckled, his must face unreadable as ever. The soft glow of the forest flickered across his chrome mask, reflecting the moonlight. True enough, Winter replied. But they've grown. Each of them is stronger than they know. Even Lucas and Alara, after all they've been through, still surprise me. Eldritch tilted his head slightly, his ancient eyes narrowing as he studied Winter. Tell me, Winter, he asked, his tone curious. Did you know it would turn out this way, or did you bluff some of it? Winter's eyes behind the mask gleamed with something unreadable, his smile hidden but evident in his voice. Old oh, friend, I never bluff. Eldritch laughed, a low, rumbling sound that echoed with centuries of experience. Of course you don't, he muttered. But there's one thing you haven't considered. Winter tilted his head slightly, intrigued. And what's that? You now owe Sarana a favour? At the mention of the vampire elder's name, Winter's shoulders relaxed and his masked face lifted toward the sky. He laughed, a sound that was both genuine and knowing. Sarana, he repeated. She is an interesting one, isn't she? Eldritch nodded. Dark, cunning, manipulative, and she enjoys it all. Winter's voice softened as he spoke, his admiration clear. Yes, but she sees the same vision we do, Eldritch. She understands the balance, perhaps from a different angle, but she's as much an ally as any of them, and powerful. Her darkness is her strength. Eldritch raised a brow, a useful ally. But you must be careful. Sarana's loyalty is not earned easily and you know how she operates. You may find yourself in debt to her for longer than you anticipate. Winter simply smiled behind his mask, his eyes glinting with a mix of amusement and foresight. I'm aware. But Serana has her own vision of this world, and as long as our paths align, I welcome her support. Somewhere dark, far away from the forest, in a place where the shadows were thick and the air was cold, Sarana sat in a dimly lit room. Her fingers danced over a goblet of crimson liquid, her eyes half-lidded as she felt the faint ripple of energy through the ether. She paused, her lips curling into a small, satisfied smile. She had felt it. Winter's praise, his acknowledgement of her efforts. It wasn't often that Winter offered such things, but Sarana could feel it nonetheless, a subtle but powerful recognition of her cunning and strength. Winter, she whispered softly, her voice like silk in the darkness, you are right to praise me. She smiled wider, her fangs glinting in the faint light. Whatever favour Winter owed her, she knew that it would be something she could twist to her advantage. And that was the real game, one that Serana was always prepared to play back in the forest. Winter stood, his masked face still turned towards the stars. Eldritch, watching him carefully, remained quiet for a long moment. You're always playing a longer game, Winter, Eldritch finally said, his voice a mixture of admiration and wariness. Winter lowered his gaze, looking at the distant horizon. We all are Eldritch. Some of us just see further ahead. Eldritch nodded, leaning back as he gazed out over the forest, watching as the friends, Elena, Lucas 
Alara, Captain Knox and Captain Harris disappeared from view, leaving behind the crumbled remains of the church and the shattered remnants of Malachi's reign of terror. They've earned their peace, Winter said softly, for now. And with that, Winter and Eldritch melted into the shadows, unseen, unheard, but always watching. <laughs>